Welcome to the Get Sellers Calling You podcast for Christian real estate agents, where we help you grow your business with some great marketing tips and grow your faith with some powerful, radical faith Bible teachings. I'm Beatty Carmichael, and I'm glad you joined us. Today, we're going to be talking about growing your business with some great marketing tips. But first, I'd like you to hear from one of our Agent Dominator clients. It's so good to talk with you again. Yeah, absolutely. Get, catch me up today now. I know uh, it's only been, what, two or months now. So not a, a whole lot of time to get any significant results. But give me a quick update on any results that you're starting to see. Things are, things are going well. Yeah, I had a listing appointment off of the first round of cards. Okay. Um, and I will know if, if they are going to list with me. They had there was some vacations and stuff, so I couldn't get them to commit. And uh, so I'll, I'll basically, I'll, I'll, I have a follow-up scheduled with them on St. Patrick's Day. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident I'm going to be listing their home. So if that's the case, I mean, that's, that's good enough results for me for an initial, you know, an initial push. So, yeah. That's great. Now, is that from your personal list or from a, uh, a neighborhood list? No, that's from a, a, a neighborhood just farming. So that's, yeah, that's why. So that's, that's why I'm pretty excited about that. So, yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, have you gotten any feedback from any of your personal contacts? So, I mean, I, I've already gotten two listings off of past clients. Well, that's really good. So I think we're targeting right about 79 or 80 of your personal past clients. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. About how long into our program did you start picking up those first couple of listings? Right. There were two that I've met with that it, it's been more – it was more than one mailer that they received from, from, uh, from you. Uh, did they reach out to you? Both of them reached out to me. Fantastic. Great. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so in addition then to the one listing you've gotten in, in uh, the neighborhood farm, you've mm-hmm. picked up two additional listings from your personal list since we started with you. Correct. Well, that's really good. That's really good. Right. And absolutely. Absolutely. Learn how Agent Dominator services can help you grow your business and get more listings. Visit us at agentdominator.com. And now, let's get started on the podcast. Okay, well, uh, welcome back, everyone. This is Beatty Carmichael with Get Sellers Calling You. And uh, I'm actually trying to move my... Here we go. Trying to move my notes over where I can see them. But uh, I'm excited on today's call because I get to interview a friend of mine and uh, someone that's just really special in terms of what he's done with his business, how he manages his life, his family. And uh, uh, his name is Andrew Klesikin from, I believe I'm correct, Andrew, Tacoma, Washington? Yeah, Tacoma area. I'm, Tacoma I'm area. Just, okay. Yes, I'm out just outside of Tacoma in Graham, so a little more rural area where we actually live, but practice all around the area here in the Puget Sound. Yeah, so uh, rural, uh, uh, chickens and pigs and uh, acreage, so uh, it sounds like yep. a dream for me. Yeah, it's um, a lot of fun. Well, um, uh, just as a brief intro, and then I'm going to uh, bring on Andrew more officially, um, uh, let him talk. But Andrew is a, uh, a consistently top producer. I've been real impressed in just working with him. And, uh, uh, and he's got a story I really want you guys to hear. But before I bring him on, I also want to mention to everyone, we have just started a Facebook group to enhance the dialogue between agents on just everything about uh, listings, sellers, getting sellers calling you. And love to invite you guys to join us on that. Uh, just look us up. The Facebook group is Get Sellers Calling You. So, Andrew, uh, how are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Just uh, spent the day out at Mount Rainier hiking with the family. I had a, a wonderful time up there. It's a gorgeous day here in October. So, I uh, took advantage of it and went up and uh, did a little hike with all six kids and my wife. So, it was a good time. Wow. Well, um, I thought real estate was a 24-7 type of business, but obviously I was mistaken with you. You get to take time off on a Thursday. I love it. 
<laughs> yes, it was uh, it, it was a good day. So, well, good. Hey, before we get started on real estate, I'd love just a little bit of background uh, if you can share with us about um, about who you are, your background, and uh, can you fill us in on who yeah. is Andrew? Yeah. So I. Uh, on the real estate side, I first got licensed in 2001, uh, sold real estate until about 2007, got out of the market, um, went into full-time ministry at the time. And uh, through that, I met my wife and uh, through different series of events, ended up leaving the ministry and uh, got back into some different types of sales, did some sales, and then finally um decided to uh, get back into real estate and uh, been in real estate full time now since 2015 and uh, started on a team, uh, grew, developed, learned, became a, a leader in the team there, uh, expansion leader. And from there, just um, realized that I wanted to kind of do and offer a little bit more on my own and branched out on my own. And, and now I have a small team here and um, just enjoying uh helping people invest in uh in through real estate so um on personal note been married uh 14 years i had to make sure i got the number right and, um <laughs> nine uh, happy nine happily married years right no, yes. <laughs> that's what i do it, my it, was, it, was, it was rough for a few few years and uh learned a lot um a lot of struggles but uh i had to learn and grow and change and and uh really lean more on on god to get me through things in my marriage and then uh from there we uh we now have six children ranging from 13 years old down to five months wow so you are a busy dad and she's a busy mom yes she works much harder than i do i, I know she her. does i remember one of my favorite pictures i um is my wife on the couch wiped out and my little three-year-old daughter just still bouncing and ready to go. And she, mom's just, you know, totally exhausted at the end of the day. So I know your mom, yes. your wife is, is wiped out too at times. Yes. Well, I'm curious. So I know that ministry has a, uh, uh, is important to you and, um, and we're going to talk about that further, but just out of curiosity, uh, if you could, do you have, do you, um, if you were to kind of weigh your time in ministry, your time in sales, do you have a one that you love more than the other? Or are they about the same or? Well, I used to probably, you know, I had worked a lot, you know, and then I'd try to serve over here. And over time, I, I got to the point to where I really try to have no distinguishing between the two. Right. Um, a lot of times, you know, in this, this job, it, it can really be, um, a, a lot of what we do isn't just sales. It, it's, it's sometimes pastoring our clients. Sometimes it, it's, you know, ministering to them where they're at in the moment, you know, through their, sometimes it's a divorce. Sometimes it's death in the family. Sometimes it's, um, we're pulling up roots and moving across country. So, all those things can really be uh, emotional to people. And so ministries a lot of times now just happens through my work and it's really been a blessing. In, and I didn't expect it that way, but it just kind of came and uh, just embraced it, you know, as, as a game and try to help people really just where they're at and just to have hope and have find their joy in the moment and make it, as stress free for them that we could take as much stress off of them as we could and just help them really um, enjoy the process as much as it could be. I love that. You know, uh, years back, the Lord directed me, as many of you guys know as well, to be a full time minister operating a business. And it's that blending of the two of how can you walk as walking Christ and be in the marketplace and operate them together. So um, I totally agree, understand what you're talking about. Um, what, uh, whether it's in real estate or somewhere else, what's your biggest failure? And what do you think you've learned from that experience? Well, to be uh, quite transparent, probably my biggest failure is I almost lost my marriage. Wow. And uh, 
It's a very, very challenging time in our life. Um, we were actually separated for over a year. Um, and I'm not sharing anything here that, you know, we haven't shared publicly before. So, okay. It, but it was, um, a very hard time. I had to, I had to grow and change a lot and, um, really, really learned to lean on the Lord. There were just a lot of, of, um, a lot of development and growing and faith through that season and just peeling off the layers of my selfishness and my, all the parts of me that I was not really wanting to deal with. So dealt with a lot of things. We both grew through the process and our marriage now is stronger now than it ever has been. So um, it was a tough season, but truly by the grace of God, we got through it. And uh, now we, um, it's been almost five years I think for, yeah, five years now since that happened, since we've reunited and and two more children. So, wow, we uh, like I said, love each other more than ever, and uh, have more joy in our marriage, more more peace in our marriage, more peace in our household. It gets challenging sometimes with six kids, you know, four boys, and uh, it's it's loud. But um, that was probably <laughs> um, one of the biggest that was, you know, my biggest failure was almost losing everything. Um, it just, you know, it rocked my world and had to come back from and truly without Jesus, I don't know how I, how I would have made it. You know, that's interesting. I was uh, just this weekend with a good friend of mine and uh, he shared with me uh, that uh, I was ministering to him. Okay. Uh, we're just talking and, and he shared that this past week he had actually gone out to uh, uh, meet with a divorce lawyer. And uh, we prayed and did some things. And things uh, it was interesting because a lot for him, there was a lot of spiritual warfare, just issues going on. And uh, the next day, everything changed in his, in his wife and his kids. You could just kind of tell there was this heaviness and darkness that was lifted, not only off of him, but off of them. And I saw his wife just standing there. So this is out in a rural place and the kids are out on the swing, swinging back. And his wife was just over there with him and had her hand on the low part of the, you know, the flat of his back. Just, you know, as a couple would sometimes touch. And I was asking my friend, I said, uh, uh, how are things today? He said, uh, first time my wife's touched me in two years. Wow. And and when you start to share that the um, biggest failure is almost losing your marriage, I think that the thing that's hitting me, and if you don't mind, I'd love to understand what you did to come out of it. Um, I think there's probably a lot more people out there that are struggling in their marriage than you and I would uh, recognize. So often we put on a good face up front. I never knew that they were having those type of struggles. And just watching them their weekend, you would never know it either. But they put on a good front. But yet, there's probably a lot of folks listening to this call that are struggling in that dark spot in their life. Uh, what did you guys do? Do you mind kind of uh, sharing a little bit? Yeah, what? so some of the things that I had to do was I had to get past – because we, we had – perfected yeah but you right so we had phds in making sure that well, well, well yeah but you so i had to lay that down and really um really focus on me which was it took a while which is why it we were separated <laughs> as long as we were um i had to really just say okay what are the areas in me that I need to fix and how do I fix those regardless of what the outcome is, but what do I need to fix? And I really had to just go to the Lord and um, figure out what are the things I had anger. And so it would come out in ways I'd yell and I grew up that way. This is, it was in my household and I didn't know any different, any better. So when I got married, I brought that baggage along with me and had to, then learn 
that's damaging, you know, and how damaging it is and hurtful. And I was like, well, just no big deal. Just move on. It wasn't just to move on. It was, there was a lot of scar tissue there that was really needing to be healed and, and made right. So I had to figure out how to work on myself and really focus on myself. Another thing um, was worship. Just getting into that place to where I would just find a song and it would carry me through. Just it would give me that hope, give me that um, ability to have faith for one more day, sometimes one more hour, you know, when I'm picking up my kids to have my visitation and it, it's, you know, just gut wrenching, but having to have a smile and have joy in that moment with that child, not right. let it be a negative memory for them, but to, Oh yeah, we, we used to go didn't do this and we did that and recognizing that it's hard for them too, but worship just it was my, my, my lifeline. Um, keeping me afloat when the negative thoughts would come, the self doubt, the just the bombardment of you know self criticism and self doubt and everything else. So look what I've gotten myself into. You know the thoughts of oh, would you just give up? You know, and then it's like no, that's not that's not what's God's best. That's not. I know that this is fixable. I know that this is, and this, there was something deep inside of me that said, you know, we can get through this. But for a long time, she said, no way. And she was like, no, we're done. We're done. And so I had to just stay the course and, and keep my faith. And it was really worship kept me through that. And just being guarding my, my ears from like, I didn't want to be around people that were naysayers. You know, because it's easy to align yourself with somebody that's going to say, oh, you should just do this. You should, uh. I had to be really cautious of that and not um, even in church. It was people that would be naysayers to the whole situation. Oh, you just you know, embrace it and move on. And there'll be somebody that's more efficient than all the garbage. And yeah, could I have gone that route? Sure. Could it have been OK? It might have been OK, but just so many wounds that would have to be healed, you know, for the children, for us to have to deal with holidays and just heartbreak. I didn't want to have to deal with at that level. So really it was, it was through worship and then guarding my heart of where am I getting my, my feedback. Um, so it was a lonely season because a lot of, I had to separate myself from a lot of people that would have said, Oh, just throw in the towel. So I'm glad you did not. Was there a um, specific point in time or event or anything that was kind of the linchpin that turned things around? Or was it just a progression over time as you grew and obviously something with her warming up? It was, it was, um, my wife, it was, was pretty much, she had set her mind on being done. She was, we had tried therapy. We had tried couple therapy. We had tried, tried and tried and tried different things. And mm -hmm. she was frustrated with it. Nothing was stuck. Nothing was making the difference. And her aunt um, was involved in some kind of a, a group that, that helps couples, couples help coaching couples. Okay. And she goes, well, I might have a toolbox that can help you. And my wife was thinking in the back of her head, if I only had a toolbox on marriage. <laughs> so that, op that cracked open the door. And this was, you know, 10 months in to being separated. So she was emotionally done, mentally done, just right. She was ready to move on. And, um, she said, well, her aunt said, well, I want to meet with both of you. So we met together and it was just that little tiny, tiny glimmer of hope that she was able to see and my wife to, to see and or me to even see in her. And so then from there, we ended up 
meeting with a counselor that was a friend of my aunt's and she, and he helped us kind of just, um, learn, learn how to communicate again, learn how to, um, lay down some of those, those walls that we had built up between each other. And, um, and then since then, it's just been a beautiful progression of, of learning that we really enjoy being together. And so it's been, been a fun progression and just every year, it's just, you know, fun. And, and our marriage now is just different. You know, we do things different. You know, we, enjoy doing things together more than we did before that is so good now uh what role would you say i know this is a great uh, it's a difficult question to formulate for me i know where i want to ask the question without having a better formulated question is what role did christ play in this your relationship and her relationship with jesus how how much of this was just going through counseling versus was there anything that was really just kind of a rock foundation in the Lord? I don't think that there would have been any possible way that we would still be married without God, uh, okay. without our faith in Jesus. I, I And I say that because knowing how she was feeling about being done um, and frustrated with me and the state of our marriage and even with everything else, just, it wasn't worth going back into the way it was Um, for her to even crack open the door as wonderful as her aunt and uncle are and how they ministered to us. It, I know without the shadow of a doubt that Jesus ministered to her heart in that moment because the door was shut. Yeah. She goes, I'll meet with you, but I don't know why, you know, I, <laughs> it, 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 she, her, I had wounded her that bad, yeah, which is why that's my biggest failure. Um, and she just didn't want to have anything to do with me. So, um, or the thought of us. So for her to see the glimmer of hope, it, it, it truly, I believe was Jesus just allowing her to her heart to be softened for that moment to see that there is there's hope you know and i chuckle and i won't be sensitive i chuckle not because it's funny but i chuckle because i've seen the lord work so often and it's usually that one little glimmer of something that just helps that person go the next step and yeah. it always it seems like such a small thing but yet it is a huge step and it's and i laugh only because I see it all the time. You have just that little glimmer of hope. That's all it, all it takes is just that little glimmer of hope. Well, that yep. is, thank you for sharing on that. I know that's kind of difficult, but I'm, I'm sure there's someone out there, maybe many that are going through. In fact, in fact, let me ask you this. So you've been through the tough time and now your marriage is amazing is what it sounds like. Um, for those who are going through a similar time, what, would what word of advice would you tell them? Guard yourself from negative thoughts. Um, speak, speak hope and life. Um, find positive things, positive affirmations, positive ways of looking at the situation as dark as it may be. Because I'm just skimming the surface here. I mean, there was it was it was bad. So like yeah it was we were at the end and so um and to come back from that is just purely a miracle so just to say you know dive into god as deep as you can you know run into heart as fast towards him as possible pray um guard against negative naysayers even if it's family like that can be hard, but I, I had to back off, you know, from people that was just, they're going to say negative things about the situation um, and really focus on, even if it's, it's always two people, even though it's in some circumstances, it might be 98% one and 2% the other 
most of the time it's close to 50 50 uh, ish with the way at least the way the perception is from both individuals but really focus on where you can fix yourself don't don't try to say well if they just did this it would be better yeah. because it's just a time suck and it doesn't work and granted they might need to fix that but let god fix that in them and it works and is our i mean it would i say is our marriage 100 perfect in every fashion every way do we never make mistakes do we are we just this perfect couple no we still have mistakes and we still stumble and we still work our way through it but it's we know how to have a adult conversation right or, or, or argue fairly we know how to listen to the other side and and we might be frustrated and but we know how to get through it now and um so yeah i i would say just you know don't you know focus on yourself make sure you fix yourself because no matter what happens at the end of the day you've got to be healthy so if you're not healthy you're not doing anybody any favors and then guard yourself from the negative you know i uh, uh and we'll move on into real estate uh let me make one last comment when you mentioned guarding yourself of what you think on and think on the good years back there was uh, i remember listening to a couple their name is bob and cindy harrison uh he was I, a do you know the name i, I know bob harrison yeah are you serious now he's yeah, an older I, man used to be yeah, in, I, in automobiles yeah and, and uh, intro I okay. used to listen to the tapes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, it was uh, so they went through some really rocky times. I'm 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 impressed that uh, you know I, not very many people. You must have been in Amway because that's where I heard them. <laughs> no, it's just, he came to our church. Okay, out here cool. Washington, yeah. So well, somebody in, uh, in, and then he he would come almost once a year. Well, for no. those who haven't heard, um, so uh, Bob and Cindy fell in love. They're, you know, opposites attract. Bob is a real go-getter. He's growing this big automobile dealership. And Cindy starts to fall out of love. Every, he, everything he does, she can't stand. And it starts to gri uh, uh, grip her and um, frustrate her. And she was actually in the process of drawing up divorce papers or engaging with a divorce lawyer. And she's a Christian, and she came across the passage that whatever is good, whatever is you know, rep reputable, whatever is, a, uh, uh, I forget the, I, I can't quote the verse, but you know one, the one I'm trying to say. And it said, keep your mind focused on these things. So she, in prayer, the Lord can, uh, impressed on her, make a list of everything she loves about her husband. Everything that she fell in love with about her husband when she fell in love. So she started making this list and she looks at it and she says, that's why I don't like him anymore. And what's happened is what she fell in love with, she then started to nitpick at. And she, by going through this process and, analyze, and, and writing down everything she really loves about him, she quickly shifted her whole perspective and fell back in love. And so your whole comment of, you know, guard your heart of uh, the negative and focus on the things that are good. So, but I'm impressed that, you know, you've met Bob and Cindy. Yeah, I've met him several times and yeah, it's, it's been probably 20 years, yep. 15, 20 years. So, but it's been a while. Well, let's talk about real estate. Um, uh, so you've been in real estate twice. You got in 2000-ish uh, and moved out at 2007. And you jump back in. Uh, talk to me about your real estate. Um, first, if you don't mind, just kind of always love if, if, if you're comfortable, what type of volume or number of transactions, just so people um, uh, recognize that, uh, you know, you're not just a $2 million a year producer and you're just going to kind of talk theory. <laughs> If you want more listings, we guarantee them an agent dominator. Whether you're marketing to a geographic farm, past clients and sphere of influence, a niche market, or even commercial property owners, our fully customized postcards produce up to 10 times more results than standard real estate postcards. And 
we guarantee your listings or your money back. So visit us at agentdominator.com to learn more. And now back to the podcast. Do you yeah, mind sharing so, anything? Sure, okay. absolutely. So, um, you know, when I first started in real estate, I had no clue. I didn't have a mentor or the mentor I did have was not <laughs> doing me right. any favor. Um, I went from hero to zero every other month, just didn't do great. Um, but I was single and of the industry, um, but didn't know how to build a business around it. So when I got back in, I was taught um, by a friend of mine how to really build a business around it. And, um, you know, through great customer service and then lead generation and follow up. So my first stint, you know, I was that $2 million producer, two to maybe, maybe six on a good year. Um, and then when I got back in, um, you know, my very first year back in real estate, I sold 31 homes. Um and uh, it being on a team, you have a split. So it wasn't as amazing if I was on my own, but at the same time, I learned a tremendous amount about how to service my customers and how to find those customers and um, get through the process. So, um, and so now I'm, I'm averaging between 20 and 30 homes a year um, and, you know, around the 10 to 12,000, 12 million a year mark. Is okay. kind of where I've been hovering the last uh, three, four years. So, um, you know, like to take it up a notch. Uh, but at the same time, I enjoy my pace with my family, having six young children. And it's really important to me to be able to uh, spend a lot of time with them. So uh, I'm, I guard that um, vigorously on making sure that I'm available to I want them to remember who their dad was, not just, yeah, dad went to work every day. Right. Um, so that's, that's uh, important to me. So, yeah, so about 20 to uh, 25 deals a year. Um, it, it had more than that, um, but around that uh, 10 to 12 million mark is kind of where I've been recently. I want to talk down to paraline, parallel lines then. Um, let's talk about guarding your time with your family. And then I want to come back and talk about what do you do to generate your business? You're consistent. Uh, year in, year out, 20, 25 deals a year. Um, how do you first, how do you guard your family? That seems like that's your priority. So what are you doing that protects that time? Because, I, you know, a lot of realtors, they go, you know, uh, like I was, I was talking to one person and say uh, about a friend of mine who, who takes off uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And he goes, how in the world can he do that? And I say, well, he sets it up that way. But what what what's the what are the guards that you guys have? Tell, tell me your your family work life balance and how do you keep it that way? Yeah, so I'll say right off the bat, I'm not perfect at it. So you know, things come in. I still may take a phone call when it's supposed to be family time from time to time. But I try my best, and I think my wife would attest to it that I've gotten better. <laughs> With that said, um, you know I. Typically, I, I try to take Fridays and Sundays off. Um, you know, there's times where the things just are unavoidable. Um, and we get that. Things happen where you have to sign something or push something out. Um, but the way I've buffered myself for it is, you know, I have an assistant and I have a transaction coordinator. So whatever I can push them, and if it's, hey, can you send an email out to this person? Then it's just a text. It's not... 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, writing out an email, doing something. So it's leveraging, you know, and allowing people to help with that stuff. So that's been a big key for me is just to have the right people around me to, to push things off when I do have, it is family time, then I can just push it off if they're, is something that comes up. Um, and then just putting it on the calendar and saying, no, that today's this day, we're going to, we're going to go do this. And, you know, we, we homeschool our kids. We've chosen to homeschool our kids from the beginning. And, um, so that, and working from home, that allows me to, um, to be in their lives. I'm, I'm usually principal. My wife's the teacher. <laughs> she has the hard job and I come in and, 
and remind them that uh, there is a line in the sand and they actually do need to do the work. So, yeah. Um, uh, but I'm here and I get to, uh, to be involved and, um, you know, it, it's hard sometimes, but it's that we've chosen this on purpose to be um, unified in our parenting, to make sure that uh, they see us together. And it's made a big difference in how we, we've seen the results with them when we are side by side saying, no, this is what's going to happen. And, um, you know, we'll get pushback sometimes, but they have learned that mom and dad are serious. (laughs) And so, uh, it, it allows us to, um, really have that family time and, uh, do it together. So a lot of it is just putting it on the calendar and then, you know, we've made choices to, you know, have uh, less of certain things and more of family. So yeah. just a lot of, you know, uh, you know, the we're purpose. out here on, on acreage. And so, you know, we don't have cable TV. We don't subscribe to, you know, the normal uh, options for viewing pleasures that some people have just because we don't want them to be sucked into watching it all day, every day or on their devices all day, every day. So it's just little things like that. Just, you know, to be uh, on purpose about things. Yeah. I think that's important. I remember um, as I started in business. So my dad was one of those that he worked all the time. I think his average week was 70 or 80 hours. He was a surgeon and you know, we saw him half a day on Sunday and that's about it. And so when I started in business, I decided I didn't want my business to own me. I wanted to own it. Um, I wanted to be the dog and it be the tail that I wag as opposed to vice versa. And I think a lot of it's just that intentionality, like what you're talking about, you intentional to have these boundaries and intentional that your business isn't going to control you, that you're going to control it. So I love that. Um, Talk to me about what you do in business. What what have you found to be probably the most important lesson or thing that you do that keeps your business consistent? Because it sounds like to me, and just talking with you over time, is you don't have a yo-yo business. You know, some people have a yo-yo. It's up one, you know, then it's it's up and down, and it just kind of gets moved with the shifts of the market, um, good or bad. But yours seems to be more consistent. At least I'm I'm inferring that. Uh, is that right? Yeah, and so, so, what do you do? Yeah, so we we it'd still see waves from you know, but the the dips and the peaks are are, are smaller. Okay. So there's still ebbs and flows to it, but I would say that what we've done um, is just you know stri- trying to stay consistent with you know being top of mind, and uh, whether it's with my sphere or the people that I market to, um, just in whatever way that is, whether you know, to ha- you know, at the end of the day, we're in a lead generation business. Right. And how do we maintain those leads? How do we nurture those leads? How do we, um, you know, find new leads? And it's just, it's being that top of mind person. And, you know, there's some people are phenomenal at doing it. And I, um, there's certain things that I enjoy about it. And there's certain things that I just, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard for me. I I don't want to ever come across as being insincere or um, the only reason I'm calling you is, you know, uh, you know, because I want you to to send me a referral and um, I don't want to be that guy. And so I want people to know me and respect me and like me for who I am. Cause that's just the, this is me. And, um, so my approach is a little bit different on, you know, when I follow up with people, talk to people and it can, a lot of it depends on where I've, where that relationship is born from, but, you know, I try to just be authentic with, Hey, I'm, I'm just here to serve you. I'm here to help. So if you need it, great. If you don't, Okay. You know, and is it fair that I follow up in a certain amount of time? So it's just having a system and using it to follow up, uh, whether it's with my friends, 
and just knowing what's going on in their lives or if it's a, a, a lead that came from another source. So, so you've uh, systemized this, you mentioned a system, um, uh, is a system in your head or do you actually have some sort of a CRM or process? Yeah, in my CRM, it, you know, I, I go through and I, I follow up with a certain amount of people per day, um, okay. try to make voice to voice calls, um, you know, not just a text or, uh, interchange, but, you know, sometimes that's all we get, right. you know, is, you know, driving or whatever. And, and I'll, if I just text that day, then I'll try to follow up with them the next week. I don't want to bombard them all right away. Sometimes, depending on the conversation, I might the next day. Um, but the key is just to staying top of mind, that they remember who I am. They know who I am. They know what business I'm in. And so, so, so expose a little bit more. So uh, you have a CRM. Is it prompting you who to follow up with? And then um, like how many... How many people a day are you trying to touch? Because it sounds like what you're sharing is you just have a system that you're constantly in front of them with some sort of a, a communication, but it's not automated. You know, you, you don't just have them on a drip email campaign or auto dial or something like that. Some weeks, that's all it is. Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> you know, some weeks, it's just the auto drip, you know, and yeah. I, I'll, I'll do my best. I There are people that do way better at this than me okay so I, I i will be flat out and just say there's people that do an amazing job at uh staying on the grindstone of every day day in day out they're always grinding doing making calls no matter what and i'd give myself about an 80 okay so it's um because i i try to balance you know there's things that come up and uh, you know usually it's based around family for me. So I, you know, sometimes I have to make that sacrifice. Well, today I'm not getting all 30 of my calls in. So I, I'm, you know, I have to go, you know, the pigs got out. <laughs> and exactly say, well, I'll get to that at the end right. of my call. Yeah. I, I got to go out now and, and, and get them back in. So, uh, it's, so how, how many calls? So are, are you trying to hit 30 calls a day? Give me just the metrics of what, yeah, so I try to make day. 30 voice to voice calls a day. Okay. And sometimes I can make that, you know, I've never made it in just 30 dials, but right. Um sometimes it's not a lot of dials. Sometimes it might be 50, 60 dials. It's two for one, but sometimes it's 200 dials. Okay. Um, or or even more. So it just uh it it's an effort. It takes time and um is that like on your calendar that this is maybe in this hour, the, this time spot? You're I try to do it in the mornings, you okay. know, between nine, nine and noon. So uh -huh. I get the kids set up in the morning, um, get them off to school, so to speak. And then, you know, start with my, my day and um, try to, you know, have other things pushed off to the side. So um, I can focus on that for that, that time zone. And then, you know, anything else is left over I do after that. Is uh, where would you rate that activity? Just making these thirty voice-to-voice -voice connections, or attempting to? Where yeah. do you place that activity uh, on the scale of, you know, if you were to look at your top three or four things that you do, where is that? Where would, does does that get placed? I'd put that pretty close to the top, just because, okay. you know, being intentionally involved in whether it's my sphere people that i have a relationship with um or is the other side people the, the mets and then the not mets people i've met before people i haven't met before and if it's either side of it if if they aren't talking to me if they don't know me or um or who we are then that's um the opportunity can be lost really quickly because it could be a, you know, a, a good friend that in a moment of weakness can refer their friend, their friend to a weak agent. So yeah. they don't have the opportunity to work with me. And, and there's some fantastic agents out there. Sure. Some really, really fantastic agents out there. And some of them, they refer to somebody else and like, great, they, they deserve to be taken care of well. And there's some not so great agents <laughs> out there. And and then I, I feel like, oh, man, they I didn't get the opportunity to serve them in a way that I would hope that they that they deserve. And 
you know, then I, that was like, ah, oh, it's not just for my, you know, my own self, but I, I know that what I've learned over the years, you know, through the number of transactions and the training I received and people I've had the privilege of working alongside with over the years, um, that I know what I have to offer is valuable. So it's, um, not to say that somebody else can't offer that, like I said, but yeah. Oh, if they end up with a, a weaker agent, it's like, oh, bummer. They, they're they going to miss out and then they might not get what they want or deserve at the end of the day. You know, what's interesting is I've talked to a number of agents. The number one thing, uh, everyone does things a little bit differently, but it seems like the number one thing that keeps their business consistent is calling their list. The being intentional on being involved. And I remember I was listening to this one guy. He's the number one producer, millions of dollars of, in income uh, with his company. And the CEO uh, was scheduled to make this kind of a nation tour and wanted to meet with this guy. He's up in New York. And the secretary was trying to schedule a time. Does this time work? No, no, no. He said, and the agent said, I've got a time on this spot in this the next week. So the guy had to rearrange his schedule so that he could be in New York at the time that he could meet with this top producer. And so when he's there, the agent, the CEO was saying, oh, and um, um, what was going on last week when I could meet with you at nine o'clock on Monday or whatever? He said, oh, I was making prospecting calls. And the CEO got upset. He said, you made me change my entire schedule just because you're making prospecting calls? And the agent pushed back. He said, that's why I'm the number one agent. I don't let anything interrupt with my prospecting calls, not even you. <laughs> and that is the number one thing, just making those calls, not necessarily prospecting, but just that engagement call. Um, so I love that that's what you're sharing is your top. What would be your number two thing that keeps your business consistent? You know, I think just having some form of a touch that's, um, whether it's a, a note card or a, a mailer or a, an email or a text, some light touch or social media post to where it's the remembrance, you know, it's the okay. next layer of, you know, being intentional, being top of mind, being involved in their, their world. Um, personal note cards work great. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I have a stack of them right here. You know, I, I can't see. Oh, it I my love background. it. Yeah, <laughs> you can put it right in front of you. <laughs> Let's see. So, that. Yeah. Oh, so, perfect. Oh, yeah. Just, so it's a little fold over, nice card. Just yeah. blank on the inside, and they work great. And I can write whatever I want. I can write happy birthday. I can write congratulations. I can write whatever I want on the inside, and um, uh, or. Hey, just thinking about you. I hope you have a great day. And um, so just, you know, it cuts through the clutter. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody enjoys opening a, a personal note. So, you know, it's interesting. Uh, one of the other guys I was interviewing, uh, the topic is, you know, he always has as much business as everyone. He turns away business at times and he does no marketing, but all he does is intentionally reaching out to people and talking and then writing a handwritten note and dropping it in the mail after the phone call. Hey, it was great to talk with you. Tell Susie congrats on her win or something like that. And that's it. That's basically all he does. And I'm thinking you're doing the same thing that he does and your business is just as consistent. You know, success leaves clues, doesn't it? It does. It does. Well, uh, what is the... Most important lesson you've learned in your career? Consistency breeds consistency. Okay. So um, if I, you know, take a month off of, if I turned everything off and did nothing for a month, I'd feel it in three months. So. Um, Amen. You know, so I, if I stay consistent, you know, even if I, it's like, okay, there's a lot going on. It's a busy week. But if at least I'm able to do my 80%, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, the 80% is 
you know, if my goal is the hundred percent that I'm able to offer that week, then that's better than a zero. So not beating myself up for, oh, I didn't get all 30 in, you know, and, you know, and some people are great at that. They're, they're like, they don't leave work until they hit their 30 and I'm proud of them. That's awesome that they have the ability and the wherewithal to do that. I want to sit down every night with my family. And if I've gotten, you know, three hours of no answers and I've got dinner cooking in the other room and it's got to happen, then I'm going to choose my family. Yeah. So, um, and you know, it's funny cause I, on the faith side of things, I, I have had to make some pretty big sacrifices where I know like if I don't do an open house this weekend, if I don't go out and meet people this weekend, like am I, I need to get leads. I need to get something happening, but something might come up where family needs me. And it, it's amazing sometimes it's like, okay, God, you know what my needs are. I'm going to sacrifice going out to, to hunt and kill right now for my family, but you've got to meet my needs. And without fail by Sunday night, hey, Andrew, can you come with me? Hey, Andrew, I got a, <laughs> a friend that's moving into town. Hey, and so, something would happen by Sunday night. I'd get that lead. And it was a hot lead that was ready to buy or sell. I love and it. And it's like, Okay, God, I know you got my I, like. I don't I, and how how that works. I don't know. There's not a formula for that other than just as a faith journey and yeah, faith. That's it. And you know that's one thing that's been hard hard for us over the years is just having faith to like because we're 100 percent commission, you know. And if we don't close deals, we're not eating. So it's one of those things that if um. It, you know, we just have to be, have faith that, okay, God, you, you know what our needs are and you're going to come through no matter what, if I do an open house or don't do an open house, if I make this 30 calls or don't make this 30 calls, somehow you're going to make it happen. Now, I think he blesses the work that we do do. Right. So it might've been the calls that I made four months ago or three weeks ago or two days ago, or it could have been from this morning, but they all come through. So let me ask you a question on that topic, but in a slightly different, quite a different angle. Now, we haven't spoken on this. Do you tithe? We do. Okay. We do. And I actually, we tithe maybe a little bit differently than some. So okay. I have two corporations or I have two businesses. I have a corporation and an LLC because I also right. actually have a general contracting side of my business. Um. My business tithes and then pays me, and then I tithe off of what my business pays me. Correct. So, um, so I want to make a quick, I want to ask you one final question because I, I see this a lot. And for those who have listened to any of my other radical faith stuff, you know, I believe quite a bit in faith, and faith is um, believing God at His word. And one of the things He says, as you know, Andrew, is that. As you give cheerfully to him, he promises to make all abundance abound to you. As you've had your life of honoring the Lord with the resources he gives you and returning it back in tithes, um, have you ever had a time in your family where you never had, you did not have enough to meet all your needs? Or has the Lord always met your needs? It. You know, the funny thing is there was a season early on in our marriage when um, <laughs> we had been married uh, just a few months and less than a year. And my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, and my wife and I all heard separately from the Lord that we were supposed to move in with my in-laws. <laughs> Very humbling. Yes. Very humbling. And difficult for my father-in-law, who's like, we're getting close to empty nesters. So, um, you know, she was the firstborn, so it was the, the first of four to, to move out. But um, for us to come back then as a family uh, w w was a challenge. So uh, we, a month after I moved back in, we moved back in with, or moved in with them. Uh, I got laid off from work. And so it was like when blindsided, they the laid off the entire department. So mm. um, we didn't have any clue that it was coming. And so, but the Lord did. 
Yes. And we went second to least. Well, through that season, we were on unemployment looking for a job. We're still able to pay off debt. We're still able to tithe, still able to do all the stuff. And we, during that time, we were able to pay off all our debt and save up for a down payment. And, <laughs> Um, and even though part of that time I was unemployed and so it, the numbers didn't make sense, Yes, but we had everything we needed and he knew ahead of time how it was going to work out. It was humbling, <laughs> very well, humbling. You know, the, the thing that the man wanted to, you know, provide for my family and having to move in with my in-laws, but they're, they're awesome people. So it made it a, a lot easier. The thing that impresses me and I want to share mostly for our listeners on this because and you, what you mentioned prompted me in this direction, but I wanted to clarify it. Uh, everyone I've talked to who honors the Lord financially with their money, okay, meaning I'm going to trust the Lord and I'm going to give back to you first and I'm going to live on what's left over. I have never yet spoken to a person that their income did not meet all of their needs. And it's also interesting that as your expenses grow, I've seen this in my life, as my expenses grow, my income grows. Sometimes my expenses decreases, my income may decrease, but it'll never, it's never in my entire year, 25 years of marriage, it has never gone backwards uh, from our expenses. And we had an experience very similar to you. I found myself this year unemployed. My wife is stayed home mom with a little baby. We have another child that year. Um, I did 13 things to try to make money and none of them really worked because my total income Adjusted gross income was eleven thousand eight hundred eighty-two dollars, and you know we had a mortgage payment, a car payment, diapers, and all these things, and yet we were faithful to the Lord and trusting Him. We always gave twenty percent off the top, and then lived on the rest. And it was really amazing because the Lord provided. We never once missed a payment. We were never even late on a payment. And and you look backwards and you start to gain confidence and faith that the Lord will carry you through everything. And especially as we move into these tough times, you know, we've got high inflation, we've got high interest rates, uh, the sales are starting to slow down. There's a lot of uncertainty. We're in a recession. And I'm sure there's a lot of fear among a lot of the folks out there selling real estate. And my encouragement is, <clears throat> if you're following the Lord and you're honoring him first and showing that you trust him, then he's going to take care of you. It may be tight, but he'll always take care of you and he'll never leave you high and dry. And that's what I love about what you were sharing is uh, you, you always had enough. We did. We did. And and there's been seasons where even, even since then that, you know, it, it, it was tight, but we always had enough. Yes. It, so, uh, um, it, it's been a blessing. We're about out of time. I have one final question for you. What is one piece of advice that you could give agents wanting to grow their business and maintain balance in their lives with their family? What would you, what's the biggest advice you could give them? You know, it's really a, a faith. It goes back to faith because there's that feeling a lot of times that if I don't do X, then I'm not going to make money because we're hundred percent commission. So we learned that we got to make our calls. We got to do our open houses. We got to, got to, got to, got to do all these things. And we think, oh, okay, I've been busy. I haven't done all my things yet. And they're like, well, I got to do these things in order to make it to, to provide, provide for my family. So it's, it gets this, this spinning wheel of like, I got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. Right. So we're always focused on work. And that's, it's so easy to get caught up in that. And I've been caught up in that. And, um, and I've seen other fellow agents get caught up in that. And they, you know, either have a failed, completely failed marriage or not one that they would really love to have. Yeah. And so it's just be willing. You have to sacrifice for your family. And that's where the faith comes in. It's like, Lord, I'm sacrificing my family. You know, my needs, I, I need you to make it work. And I've found personally without fail time after time when I would make a big sacrifice, I'd, ha I'd had open houses scheduled and set and like everything ready to go 
open house signs in my trunk, ready to head out and something would, would derail me. And, and I'd have to make that tough call to say, I got to cancel. Yeah. And to give up work and, you know, it, it really helped me grow my faith to say, I, I'm choosing my family now, but you're going to have to come through. And he, without fail, always would. And so I, it was, it, it was shocking almost. I was like, did that, that just happened. Like I just got that. That, that new sale just happened. So, uh, and we, we got to the point where we just laugh about it. It's like, there he is again. It, yeah. it came again. And so now like we've had that, that uh, experience to know that he is faithful and it will come through and may not always be when we think it needs to be, but it'll be in the right timing when that bill needs to be paid and that expense needs to be covered. And, whatever else needs to happen and it'll always come through. So just to have faith and be willing to make the sacrifice, you have to make the sacrifice and put it on the schedule and make it happen. Cause if you don't schedule it and make it happen and be willing to sacrifice for your family, it, it you, you may make it through the storms, but you'll feel the bumps a whole lot more. Yeah. That is great advice. Um, anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up the call? No, I think uh, we've covered quite a bit. <laughs> we have. We've covered quite a bit. A little bit of marriage counseling, a little bit of uh, ministry, a little bit of growing the business and and having some fun time. Yeah, so, yeah it's kind of all tied together, you know, because if you, it, it, it really does, at, at the end of the day, it all ties together. If one is failing, the other suffers. Yeah. So, um. You know, it's hard to focus on your job if you just had to drag out conversation with your spouse. Um, so having them both healthy definitely helps helps the tide rise. Well, let me encourage as we wrap up for those that are listening. Number one, um, place a focus on your marriage, obviously, and your family. Uh, focus your activities around honoring the Lord. And also for those who uh, really have a passion for the Lord and feel an urge to want to do something of greater importance, maybe eternal importance type thing. Let me encourage you to really strategically think through how can you use your real estate business as a ministry to the people that you work with and minister to their needs. One of the things I'll just share what we do in our business and some of y'all who've been on the phone calls with us, you'll recognize this. We have, it's not a directive, but it's a strong encouragement before we get off the phone with any customer or prospect to say, hey, before I let you go, is there anything I can pray for you about? You'd be surprised how many people would like prayer on something. And if you were just engaged with your clients and whether you know something going on or not, but just, hey, is there anything I can pray for you about? Because it it breaks it breaks down the barrier and allows you to um, uh, uh, just to represent Christ, especially in those times of need. Yep. Absolutely. So uh, as we wrap up, just a couple of reminders. Uh, if you're not subscribed to our podcast, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you don't know how to do it on your phone, you just go to your phone, go to your app store, look for a podcast player and you search for get sellers calling you. Uh, on YouTube, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and please join our Facebook group as it grows and develops. You know, it should be a great resource just to get feedback from other agents across the country on how to better improve your business, especially as we hit these market shifts. So y'all have a very blessed day. And Andrew, thank you again for your time and for sharing. My, My pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please do two things. Number one, please share this on social media so other people can enjoy it. And number two, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to either our YouTube channel or our podcast audio channel that you'll find on any audio player with your mobile phone. And then that way you won't miss another episode. Also, if you want help generating listings, please visit our website at agentdominator.com where we guarantee them or give your money back. 
Thanks again for listening to the Get Sellers Calling You podcast and have a very blessed day.